Hello everyone. Welcome to MBA Karo. In this video, I am going to uh, solve CAD 2021 slot 3 quant section. And let us see that uh, what are the kind of questions that were asked and what should have been the best approach to solving those questions. So if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like my content if you enjoy it. Here's the first question. It says a four digit number is uh, formed by using only the digits 1, 2 and 3 such that both 2 and 3 appear at least once. Okay, and uh, you have to find the number of such four digit numbers. Okay, so uh, one thing that we can have is 2 and 3 are minimum. Then we can have two ones, two and three are minimum. We can have one and two, two and three are already there. We can have one and three, okay? Two and three are already there. Now we have included one in all possible forms, okay? Now uh, we can also have a case where we have both two, two and three are there. We can also have a case wherein we have both three and we can have a case like we have two and three. Okay, so let's do this. How many cases, how many arrangements that we will get of these cases? So if we see this, this is there are four digits and two digits repeated. So four factorial by two factorial that is 12 cases. Similarly, here we have four digits and two digits repeated. Two, two comes twice. Here we have three, three coming twice. So 12. Now in this case, we have four digits and three of them are repeated ones. So that is 4. Similarly, here we have 3 digits repeated. So 4 cases here again. And the last one we have 4 digits. Okay. And you have uh, 2 times repetitions. Like 2 is repeated twice, 3 is repeated twice. So 2 factorial, 2 factorial that will be 6. So adding all these we will get 36, 40 and this 10, 50. Okay. So the answer is 50 such numbers. Next question, if a certain weight of an alloy of silver and copper is mixed with 3 kg of pure silver, the resulting alloy will have 90% silver by weight. If the same weight of the initial alloy is mixed with 2 kg of another alloy, which has 90% silver by weight, the resulting alloy will have 84% silver by weight. Okay, and we need to find the weight of initial alloy. Now, in this case, uh, what we will have is, uh, <coughs> let us say, uh, one thing is uh, that we can go by options, right? We can put one option by other. The other approach is, let us say, the initial weight is, let us say, weight is X and uh, we have to find the purity of silver, okay? Suppose we have, uh, we have uh, Y percent, Y is the purity. Okay, so total weight of uh, silver in this case will be uh, total weight of silver if we talk about, we have to find for silver. So uh, we have uh, x, y plus this is 3 kg of silver. So we get total silver as x, y will be the quantity of silver and this upon total weight will be x plus 3 kgs, isn't it? So this is the quantity of silver. And this is weight of alloy. Okay, so this is equal to 90% silver by weight. Okay, so we can say that it is, we can just write 90% or 0.9. Okay, whichever way you wish to write. So, uh, uh, similarly, if we mix, if the same weight of initial alloy is mixed, so initial alloy, same weight x kg, and it's uh, weight is this uh, purity is y percent so x y plus 2 kg ha that has 90 percent silver so it has 1.8 kg of silver and total weight of this alloy will be uh, x plus 2 kgs because this alloy is 2 kg okay so quantity of silver upon quantity of uh, weight of alloy okay so that is 0.84 so what we need to do is we need to find x so what we will do is we will multiply this. So we will get xy plus 3 is equal to 0.9x 
plus point two point seven. Okay, and if you multiply this x y plus one point eight is equal to point eight four x plus one point six eight. Okay, so we'll subtract this so that x y gets removed. So we get one point two is equal to point zero six x plus one point zero two. So just multiply by hundred. Uh, so this is one twenty is equal to six x plus hundred and two. So this gives x is six x eighteen or x is equal to three. So the answer is three kgs. Another way could have been by using the options and uh, then checking which fits in the answer. In a triangle ABC, angle BCA is equal to fifty degree. Okay, so let us make this triangle. So this is angle B. C A. So this is angle C. This is fifty degree. Okay, and it says that D and E are points on A B and A C. So D is a point on A B, and E is a point on A C such that A D is equal to D E. A D is equal to D E. So these sides are equal. If F is a point on B C, F is a point here such that B D is equal to D F. B D is equal to D F. Okay, B D is equal to D F. Then F D E angle F D E. We have to find this angle. Okay, so how to find this angle is one way is uh, since we are not given any constraint, we can assume any number. So let us do both ways. First the the proper way and the uh, the hack that we should use be using in such questions. Okay, so the proper way is let us say this is angle A. Okay, now and this is angle B. All right, so it uh, it is given that D E E D E are points such that A D is equal to D E and uh, B D is equal to D F. B D is equal to D F. Okay, so this is angle A. This will also be angle A. Okay, total uh, this these two sides are equal, so these angles will be equal. Similarly, this is angle B. This will be angle B. Okay, so this is one eighty minus two B, and this angle will be one eighty minus two A. This angle ADE, angle ADE is equal to one eighty minus two A. Similarly, angle BDF is equal to one eighty minus Two B. Okay, and we have to find this angle. Let us say this angle is X. Okay, so if we add all these three angles, this becomes a line. This angle plus this angle plus this angle, it is a line. So we get three sixty minus two A minus two B plus X is equal to one eighty. Okay, so what do we get on simplifying X? So X is equal to this is two uh, times of A plus B. This is a. If we bring it here, this will be two a plus two b, and this will be minus one eighty. Okay. Now we know that c is equal to fifty degree. So a plus b will be equal to one thirty. So two times of a plus b will be two sixty. Two sixty minus one eighty, we get the answer as eighty degree. Okay. So that is one way. Another way is uh, instead of uh, just taking these variables, let us assume any angle. Okay. So let us take sixty and seventy. Right. Let us say that this is sixty. This is seventy. So we can say that this will also be sixty. This will also be sixty. This is seventy. So this will be forty. Sixty, forty, hundred. So this is eighty degree. Okay. Not satisfied. You could have taken another value. Let us take fifty and eighty. Okay. So you we what the best way is to I mean just assume some values. Fifty, fifty. So we get hundred, one eighty degree. Okay. And uh, if we take eighty, eighty, one sixty. Twenty degree, eighty hundred again, eighty degree. So you either you choose this way or you can just assume any value and see. So in assumption, you must do that. You should try with two values. Okay, so I tried with one value and just to cross check, I tried with another value. I was getting the same answer, so I will just move ahead with that answer. Next question: Anil can paint a house in twelve days, while while Barun can paint in sixteen days. Okay, twelve and sixteen. So we know the LCM is forty-eight. So let us say they need to do to do the total work of forty-eight. So A is forty-eight by twelve, four units, 
and b if we talk about it is 48 by 16 that is 3 units okay now a b and c undertake the to paint the house for 24000 and three of them together uh, complete the painting in 6 days now 48 in 6 days that means 8 units per day okay now a is doing 4 units b is doing 3 units c should do 1 unit that is why they will get total 8 units in a day okay now c is doing 1 unit out of 8 so she c should be paid 1 by 8th 1 by 8th of 24000 is 3000 so it was a simple question easy question on time and work next question for a real number a if log 15 a plus log 32 a this is equal to 4 then a must lie in which of these ranges okay now let us see this this is like you can say that this x plus y upon x y so if we separate it we can we say that if, if i take these two separately if i take log 15 a upon log 15 a into log 32 a plus log 32 a i can write this separately like this this equal to 4 okay so log 15 a gets cancelled so we'll get 1 upon log 32 a plus in this case this will get cancelled 1 upon log 15 a <coughs> is equal to 4 okay so we know this property that if we uh, interchange this with this we get the reciprocal of it so this can be written as log a 32 so if you change replace this with this right you take the base as uh, uh, the logarithm so this changes plus log a 15 is equal to 4 okay so we get that log a 480 is equal to 4 so this gives a key power 4 is equal to 480 okay now we need to find this value uh, now we have to find the range of a so we know that 4 to the power 4 is 256 and 5 to the power 4 is 625 so a will lie between 4 and 5 again easy question just you should know the properties of logs how to simplify them that's it is that is what is needed in these questions next question the arithmetic mean of score of 25 students in an examination is 50 right so that says that average is 50 so total is we know that remember this thing average is equal to sum upon number of values and uh, that sum is equal to average into number of values okay so we are given that average is 50 and there are 25 students so total is 1 2 5 0 okay now it says five of these students uh, top the examination with same score fine if the scores of the other students are distinct integers other students are distinct integers with the lowest being 30 so minimum 30 and we have to find the maximum possible score of the toppers so if you have to find the maximum of toppers the other students should have minimum scores right if you have to maximize something other should be minimized so we need to minimize this score so let us say they will have minimum is 30 so and these are distinct integers different different values we need to consider so we will take 30 31 32 and so on how many values are there so there are 25 students out of them five are toppers so others are 20 people right these are 20 students so 20 terms will end in 49 1 2 3 4 and so on 20, 49 so uh, the sum of these other students is equal to n by 2 a plus n which is equal to 20 by 2 30 plus 49 that is 790 okay 790 is of other student so five toppers have a total of if you subtract this we get 460 so and these are equal right with same score so just divide by 5 we get the answer as 92 okay so just keep these things in mind when you have to minimize something try to maximize the other thing and vice versa okay so this we get as 92 next question 
one part of a hostel's monthly expenses is fixed and the other part is proportional to the number of its boarders. The hostel collects 1600 per month from each boarder. When the number of boarders is 50, the profit is 200 per boarder. And when the number of boarders is 75, the profit of the hostel is 250 per boarder. When the number of boarders is 80, the total profit of the hostel will be what? Okay. So in this case, the cost is, that is a fixed cost, let us say fixed and variable is some, so n into variable cost. Okay. So n is the number of people. So fixed plus variable cost, variable cost will depend on the number of people. Okay. Now let us take the variables f and v. Okay. Now when there are 50 people, when there are 50 people, cost is equal to f is fixed that will remain fixed we do not know this n n is 50 and v is the variable cost so f plus 50 v is equal to now what is the total cost here right that is the total cost right F fixed plus variable cost now what is the total cost see the hostel collects 1600 per month from each border okay when this there are 50 students the profit is 200 per border so that means cost is 1400 per border isn't it in the first case the cost is 1400 per person because 200 is profit they are collecting 1600 so 1400 into 50 so that is uh, 7000 70000 14 into 5 70 and 3 70000 okay now similarly when there are 75 people the cost will be equal to f plus 75v okay that is equal to how many people how much is the profit now the profit is 250 per border right so profit is 250 they are collecting 1600 so cost will be equal to 1350 per person so 1350 into 75 okay so let us calculate this value 75 into 0 is 75 into 5 is 375 uh, 37 carries 225 262 26 carries 101 okay so this will be the cost when there are total cost okay so we are talking about the total cost fixed cost plus variable cost now what we need to do is we need to find for 80 people right if there are 80 people what will be the cost uh, so we need to find the profit okay so what we will do is uh, if we subtract this see we do not need to calculate f and v separately so if you subtract the first equation from the second equation second minus first gives us that 25v is equal to how much this is 31 and uh, this is 170,000 this is 101,000 31,250 now we need to find for 80 people okay now what people do is they will calculate v they will calculate f and then put in this no not needed see this thing so if you have to find the cost for 80 people so cost will be f plus 80 v right we already know 75 v tak okay so what we can do is i can find 5 v 5 v is equal to div divide this by 5 this will get as 625 into 5 is this 6250 so f plus 80 v i will add 6250 in this right instead of finding f and v separately just add this value because i have calculated 25 v i can calculate 5 v okay so i'll just add 5 more v because i know f plus 75 v so this will give us 107 107 and 500 so 1 lakh 7500 that is the cost of 80 people okay now we need to find the total total profit in this case okay so uh, we know this thing so uh, the uh, the revenue will be profit is revenue minus cost okay how much they are charging they are charging 1600 and there are 80 students minus 107 500 so 1600 means 128 and three zeros minus 107 and 500 so this is 20,500. So that will be the profit in this case. Okay, so that was the catch here. Not to calculate F and V separately, just calculate uh, 
this and get the values. All right. Let's move on to the next question. Meera and Amal walk along a circular track starting from the same point at the same time. If they walk in the same direction, they then uh, in 45 minutes, Amal completes exactly three more rounds than Meera. If they walk in opposite directions, they meet for the first time exactly after three minutes. Now, an important thing to understand here is if two people run in a circle and they run in opposite directions, okay, when do they meet for the first time? Meet for the first time, that means that uh, total, total distance is one round. Total distance is one round okay now when they are moving in this uh, in this they are taking that uh, total distance of one round in three minutes okay now they are saying that uh, that in 45 minutes uh, like it is saying that total distance is one round uh, that is uh, like if they meet for the first time. So in three minutes they are meeting. So in three minutes they are completing total one round. Now if they are, if they walk for 45 minutes, okay. So if they walk for 45 minutes, in 45 minutes they will meet 15. They will total complete. So what happens when they move in opposite direction? They total complete around, okay. But when they move in same direction they use subtract them right you say that a plus b and in this case you say a minus b okay so suppose they are moving in same direction only in 45 minutes they will complete 15 rounds right a plus b is equal to 15 okay right a plus b the number of rounds now it is given that amal completes exactly three more rounds than Mira. Right, so that means a minus b is equal to three. So that means Amal completes nine rounds and Mira completes six rounds. That is what is meant. Okay, so total Amal will complete nine rounds and Mira will complete six rounds. Now the question is the number of rounds Mira walks in one hour is so forty five minute. She completes six in sixty minutes. She will complete. 6 into 60 by 45 that is 8 rounds so the answer is 8 okay so just without doing much of calculations just remember this logical thing that if they are moving in same direction they complete one round when they meet for the first time okay so if suppose they were moving in the same direction so they would have completed total 15 rounds okay but they are moving in opposite directions okay and it is given that one person has completed three more rounds so that means uh, a has completed nine rounds b has completed six rounds so the answer will come as eight rounds okay next question one day rahul started uh, at uh, a work at 9 a.m. and Gautam joined him two hours later. They then worked together and completed the work at 5 p.m. the same day. If both had started at 9 a.m. and worked together, the work would have been completed 30 minutes earlier. Working alone, the time Rahul would have taken in hours to complete the work is. Okay, so uh, it says that Rahul started a work at 9 a.m. and Gautam joined it two hours later. Right, uh, so uh, let us say that Rahul works at R units in a day, in one hour and Gautam works G units in one hour, okay. So they start at 9 a.m. and they work till 5 p.m. Okay, so Rahul works for 8 hours, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., 8 hours and Gautam joined him 2 hours later. So Gautam joins at uh, like 11 and 11 to 5, so Gautam works for 6 hours. So that is the work done, work is equal to. 8R plus 6G. Okay. Now, if both started at 9 a.m., so if both of them start at 9 a.m., the work would have been completed 30 minutes earlier. That is 7.5 hours. Okay. So at 4:30, both of them would have completed the work. So 7.5 hour plus 7.5 G. So that will be the total work. So in both the cases, the total work is same. 
Now if we substitute it, we will get 0.5R is equal to 1.5G, right? Or we can say that R is equal to 3G. Now working alone, we have to find how much time Rahul would have taken. Right? So if Rahul is working around, so we will substitute G, right? So if Rahul is equal to 3G, so 6G will be equal to 2R. So that means work is equal to 10 R. So that means 10 R 10 hours of Rahul. So he if he works alone, he will take 10 hours to complete work. So this is how we do that. Just equating the manpower and uh, finding the ratio in which they do the work. So the answer is 10. Next question: the total of male and female population in a city increased by 25% from 1970 to 1980. During the same period, the male population increased by 40% while the female population increased by 20%. Okay, from 1980 to 90, okay, some more information is given. So, let us first restrict us, ourselves to this part and then we will move further. So, population increased by 25%. Okay, total population. And male population increased by 40%, female increased by uh, 20%. So we will use allegation, right? The best way is male population, one is 40, second is 20 and overall 25, right? So this is male population, this is female population, this is the overall population. Okay, so what we get? We get 5 and 15. So this is 1 ratio 3. So male ratio female is 1 ratio 3. Okay. Now from 1980 to 1990, the female population increased by 25%. Some more information is given. So let us do that. We will write the population in 1970, 1980, 1990. Although it is a difficult question, but using allegations, it can be simplified. Okay. Now we are given that male and female is 1 ratio 3. So let us say male population is 25 and female is 75. So that the total is 100. Okay, the, the reason why we took is because it's a percentage based question. Okay, next we have to see is uh, it is given that from 1970 to 80, uh, male population increased by 40%. So 40% increase if we make, that will be 10 more, that is 35 and female increase by 20%. 20% of this is 15, that is 90. And overall is 125. That fits, isn't it? This taking this ratio helped us. And you, you can verify also that answer is coming correct. Now from 1980 to 90, the female population increased by 25%. 25% of 90 will be 1 fourth of 90 is 22.5. So uh, this will be 112.5. Okay. 112.5. And it is given that female population is twice the male population. So half of this is 56 and 0.5 cut 25. Okay. <clears throat> so total population is 168.75. It is given that the percentage increase in total population. So total population 100 became 168.75. So the percentage increase is 68.75. So using allegation and using the right set of variables, we were able to get the answer in lesser time as compared to a conventional approach okay okay so let's see the next question let abcd be a parallelogram uh, the lengths of the sides ad and diagonal ac are 10 centimeter and 20 centimeter respectively if angle adc is equal to 30 degree okay so let us draw a parallelogram and this is 30 degree angle this is adc Okay, and uh, let's say this is the parallelogram, not perfectly parallel. It is given that the side AD is 10 and diagonal AC is 20. Okay, now we need to find the area of the parallelogram. So area of parallelogram is basically base into height. So let us draw a perpendicular from this to this side. Okay, perpendicular is this. Now we are given that this is 10 and this is 30 degree, right? So in a 30 degree triangle, what happens is uh, the sides are the ratio 1, root 3 and 2, right? 2 is the hypotenuse. 
and 30 degree is with the angle right so the adjoining side so that is basically half of hypotenuse okay and uh, ad and diagonal ac are 10 and 20 centimeter okay so this is 20 and this is 10 and this we need to find out so uh, if we calculate this this is 10 uh, angle ADC is 30 degree isn't it so we will get this as so this this is the opposite side of this will be the smallest okay so this will be 5 right so the 1 1 is the uh, opposite to the smallest side so smallest side is 1 so uh, smallest angle this is 5 this is 10 and this is 5 root 3 okay so this will be the sides of this triangle okay now uh, let us say this point is e now ec in this triangle this is a right angle triangle okay and this is 20 this is 5 so ec will be equal to under root of this is 400 minus 25 this is root 375 okay and uh, we can take 25 common 25 ka root is 5 5 root 15 this comes as 5 root 15 so from here to here it is 5 root 15 and from here to here it is 5 root 3 okay so applying that uh, 30 60 uh, 90 triangle rule we got this length and then applying this uh, to find the uh, using this pythagoras theorem we got this length <coughs> So area is half, uh, nee, sorry, uh, base into height because half is for triangle, this is double of it. So base into height, base is 5 root 3 plus 5 root 15 and into height is 5. Okay, so 5, 5, we can take 5, 5 uh, common, 5 into 5 is 25 and inside we will get root 3 plus root 15. So root 3 plus root 15 and 25 that is the answer to this question next question a park is shaped like a rhombus and has area of 96 square meter if 40 meter of fencing is needed to uh, enclose the park uh, we need to find the cost of laying electric wires along its two diagonals at the rate of 125 per meter okay so it says the area is uh, it's a rhombus and area is 96 and 40 meter of fencing is required 40 meter fencing means all sides need to be fenced okay all sides need to be fenced and all are equal so this means all sides are 10 all sides are 10 now one thing that you must remember is in a rhombus the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other okay and you must also know pythagorean triplets see in the previous videos also i told you that pythagorean triplets if you know right it will take a lot of it will save a lot of time because uh, they will they tend to ask those values so we know that 6 8 10 is a pythagorean triplet 6 8 10 now let us verify that does it does it fit okay so if this is 6 8 this will be 8 and 6 right so total diagonal length will be 12 and this diagonal length is 16 okay so area will be equal to half 16 into 12 that is 96 which matches the given area so you should not be solving equations you should be knowing this pythagorean triplets because in most of the cases these they will be as it is okay so we got this thing right now the thing is we need to find the cost of laying electric wires along its two diagonals at the rate of 125 per meter so uh, one diagonal is 12 another diagonal is 16 okay so total we need 28 28 meter of wire and 28 the price is 125 so 125 into 28 uh, if we do that um, so we can say that 5 by 4 35 35 and hundreds so 3500 will be the answer to this question so pythagorean triplets help you in these questions like rhombus especially wherein right angle triangle is formed and other uh, right angle triangle based questions let's move to the next question uh, it says that 3x plus 2y plus y is equal to 7 and x plus x plus 3y is equal to 1 
then x plus 2y is now this is uh, a difficult question this was a difficult question in fact uh, in the paper now what we need to check is in this case we will have to make four cases okay so we know that if mod x is equal to x if x is positive and if it is uh, mod x is equal to minus x if it is negative okay so we have two variables here one is y one is x so we will have to take four cases we will take x y both positive okay we will take x y both negative in one case we will take x positive y negative and the fourth case we will take x negative y positive okay so definitely a question that should have been skipped in the examination because uh, like maybe three of the, uh, of course three of them will be since we have a unique answer three of these cases will be invalid okay all right so let us see that how do we do this so let us take x and y both positive so if we take both positive we will get the equations as 3x plus 2 3x plus 3y is equal to 7 and this will be 2x plus 3y is equal to 1 okay so if we subtract this we get x is equal to 6 okay and if we put x is equal to 6 uh, we get uh, 2x plus 3y so we get 3y is equal to uh, minus 11 and y is equal to minus 11 by 3 which does not fit because we are saying that both are positive but we are getting the result x positive and y negative okay so this is not possible if we take x and y both negative okay so what we will get we will get this equation as 3x this will be minus 2y it will be 3x minus 2y plus y is equal to 7 or we can say that 3x minus y is equal to 7 okay and similarly this if we are treating x as negative we will get x minus x that will be uh, x minus x is 0 okay so 0 plus 3 by 3y is equal to 1 now we are getting y is equal to 1 by 3 but we said that both of them are negative so this is also not possible now we will try the third case we will treat x as positive and y as negative so y if we put y is equal to negative okay so we will get this equation that just the, the just uh, the one that we got right now okay and if we put x is equal to positive x positive means that we will get 2x plus 3y is equal to 1 okay so let us solve this equation uh, if we multiply by 3 times this is 9x minus 3y is equal to 21 so adding this we get 11x is equal to 22 or x is equal to 2 okay and putting x is equal to 2 this is 6 and 6 and uh, this is 6 and 7 minus 1 we will get y is equal to minus 1 you can check there also 4 4 minus 3 1 right so we get x is equal to 2 and y is equal to minus 1 so we are getting x positive and we are getting y negative so that satisfies so x plus 2y is equal to 2 minus 2 that is equal to 0 okay so in the examination scenario it depends on your luck right maybe you started with this case you would have got in the first attempt if you started if you took this case first and then this case that it would have been a fourth attempt right so uh, anyway in the examination you should not be checking be, be, if you got this answer but let me show you that how this case will be wrong so let us say if we take x negative so x negative means that we will get this equation 3y is equal to 1 or y is equal to 1 by 3 and y positive means that we will get 3x plus 3y equal to 7 okay y positive that happens so uh, y is equal to 1 by 3 3y so we get 3x plus 1 is equal to 7 or x x comes as uh, 2 okay so this as per this equation we are getting x is equal to 2 but we said that x is negative hence this is not possible so that is the only possibility we will get x as a positive number and y as a negative number and solving for them we get the answer as 0 okay so it was a difficult question difficult in the sense that time consuming you need to check for all the cases and uh, it was be depending on your luck that in what case you get the answer next question in a tournament a team has played 40 matches so far and won 30 percent of them if they win 60 percent of the remaining matches their overall win percentage will be 50 percent 
Suppose they win 90% of the remaining matches, then the total number of matches won by the team in the tournament will be. Okay. Now again, this is this has to be done by allegation. Okay. Now they have won 30%. Right. So initial win rate is 30%. Uh, their remaining win rate is 60%, and overall we get as 50%. Right. So 30%, 30%. We have 60%. And overall is 50%. Okay, so we need to find out how many matches they must have played. So this is 10% and this is 20%. That is 1 ratio 2. So we know that for 30%, they have played 40 matches. So they will have to play 80 more matches. Okay, so you want to check, verify. So for 40, they have 12 wins. Okay, 30%. And in 80, if they give 60%, that is 48 wins. So in 120, they will have 60 wins. Okay, so that is 50%, that is satisfied. Okay, suppose they win 90% of the remaining matches. So if they win 90%, so that means they win 72 matches. Okay, so they, they have not asked the percentage, they have asked the number of matches won. So if they win 72 matches out of this, they will have 84 wins. So that is the question asked. So 84 wins in the tournament. All right, let's see the next question. The number of distinct pairs of integers m and n satisfying 1 plus m n uh, less than m plus n less than 5 is. Okay, so how to approach these questions is, now this is uh, quite uh, a difficult one. Okay, and let's see that because we will have to do counting any, uh, manually. Okay, alright, so let's see this that how do we uh, get the answers. Uh, if we take, let us say if we take m and n, we have to find integers. Okay, so let us take, if we take m, m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1, what will happen is this will become 2, this will become 2, right? But 2 is less than 2 is not possible, okay? And if we take any integer greater than uh, some number, let us say if I take, uh, if I make it 0, okay, and it has to be less than 5 also. So, uh, we need to check that if I make it 0, uh, this will this will remain as 1. Okay, if I am trying to make it 1, if I take any integer, like if I take any integer, so it becomes 1 plus 1. Okay, and this is also 1 plus 1. So it becomes 2. Okay, 2 and 2, which is not possible because it has to be less than that. If I take higher values of m and n, let us say if I take 1 and 2. Okay, so if I take 1 and 2, this will become 3 and this will become 3. Okay, so this is not possible. Right? For higher values, it will be even more difficult. Like if I take 2 and 2, it will be 4, 5 and this is 2 plus 2, 4. Again, that is not possible. So what is possible is, if I make this 0, like if I take one of the numbers as 0, because if we are taking positive numbers, right, we are not getting the result. So let us make one of the numbers 0. Let us put m is equal to 0. Right? If you put m is equal to 0, what will happen is for any value of n, this will remain as 1 only. Okay. And this we need to find within which, which should be greater than 1 but less than 5. So if we take 1, this is this has to be less than 5. So what all values can we take? We can take 2, we can take 3, we can take 4. Okay. So now we know that m is equal to 0. So that means in order to make it 2, m plus n is equal to 2, we need to make n is equal to 2. Okay. If we take m is equal to 0, we can have n is equal to 3 also. Okay. And if we take m is equal to uh, 0, we can have n is equal to 4 also. Right. So three cases. Now, it's a modulus thing. Okay. So if I have instead of 2, if I have minus 2, what will happen? Again, it will be minus 2 and mod will be 2. So I can still have plus minus 2. I can have plus minus 3. Because if I took minus 3, this mod will be 3. This is 1. This is 3. This is 5. Perfect. I can take 4 also. Plus minus 4. So I have 6 cases. Now I did the operation with m putting m is equal to 0. Okay. What if I put n is equal to 0? I will get the same cases. If I put n is equal to 0, m can be plus or minus 2. Because this will be 0. So this value will be 1. And this is minus 2. Okay, so uh, if I put 2, it will be 2. If I put minus 2, it will be again 2. Then plus minus 3. 
plus minus 4. Okay, so we get 6 cases here also. So the total cases are 12. Okay, it was a tricky question in the examination, a time consuming one. And here is the approach to solving it in the appropriate manner. Okay, so let's see the next one. A shop owner bought a total of 64 shirts from the wholesale market that came in two sizes, small and large. The price of a small shirt was 50 less than the price than that of a large shirt. She paid a total of 5000 for the large shirts and a total of 1800 for the small shirts. Then the price of a large shirt and a small shirt together in rupees is. Now see this question. This question has options. If it was a theta question, probably it would have been difficult because you would have got equations and tried to solve it. Okay. However, if you are given with the options, this question becomes super easy. Okay. It says that small shirt was 50 less. Okay. So let us say the small shirt price is S and large shirt price is S plus 50. Okay. Now what it is asking? It is asking the price of large shirt and small shirt together. So basically it is saying 2S plus 50. Okay. Now if you put 2S plus 50 is equal to 150. So we will get the price as 50 and 100. Okay. In this case you will get in decimals. So try to avoid those decimals. In this case we will get 75 and 125. Okay. So what we will do is we will use the options to solve this question rather than making equations. So there are 64 shirts and uh, small shirt is 50 and that of the large shirt is uh, so we so that person paid 5000 for small and for large so let us say the number is x and for the large number will be 64 minus x okay and uh, for the price let us say the price is 50 and we will we will try with this and then we will also try with the other method also and I mean, the, uh, we will try with the other option and then see what fits as the answer. Okay, so suppose the price is 50. So 50x is equal to 1800. So x will be 36. Okay, so 36 into 50 is this. Now this will be 28, 36 minus uh, uh, 64 minus 36. This total is coming as 2800. Not matching, right? So if you put 50 and 100, this is not matching. The condition is not matching. So this is not the answer. Okay, now let us try with 75 and 125. Now 75x is equal to 1800. So x will be is equal to 1800 by 75 if we do. These are multiples of 25. So 72 and 3 that is 24. Okay, so small size shirts we have 24. So large size shirts should be 40. 40 into 125 if you do that comes as 5000 bingo that is our answer okay so that means uh, the total price is 200 so that is the best way to attempt this question otherwise i mean if it was a theta question then you would have better skipped this question because it would have resulted in a quadratic equation a lengthy one okay and uh, like you would have taken the price as uh, s then you would have taken s plus 50 and solved for x and s basically you would have substituted s uh, the x in terms of s and solved the quadratic equation so this is this was the best approach to solving this question next question consider a sequence of real numbers x1 x2 x3 such that this this is the condition given to us x1 is equal to minus 1, we have to find x100. x1 is equal to minus 1. x2 is equal to x1 plus 1 minus 1, right? That is minus 1 only. x3 is equal to x2 plus 2 minus 1. n minus 1 it says, right? So that means that is x2 is minus 1 and x uh, this is minus 1 plus 1 is 0 x4 will be x3 plus 3 minus 1 that is what is given to us so x3 plus 2 so this is 2 x5 is equal to x4 plus 4 minus 1 okay so that is addition of 3 to this that is 5 x5 uh, sorry x6 is equal to x5 plus 
5 minus 1. So 5 minus 1, 4 added to this is 9. x7 is equal to x6 plus 6 minus 1. So 5 added to this is 14. Now if you see this pattern, right, so uh, if you see the first sum of first four numbers, like if you see that 1, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 10, okay, so if we add the first five numbers, we get the total as 15 and we are getting 14, right, we are getting uh, 10 minus 1, 15 minus 1, if we see the next term, right x7 plus 7 minus 1 so 14 plus 6 20 okay so basically what we are seeing this is we know that this is the sum of first four natural numbers this is the sum of first five natural numbers this is the sum of first six natural numbers okay so what we are seeing is x whatever the value of this is uh, two less than that Okay, so if it is x8, so sum of first six natural numbers, ka, uh, that is the value minus 1. So like this way, we get x100 is equal to sum of first 98 numbers minus 1. So sum of first 98 numbers will be 98 into 99 by 2, okay, minus 1. So if we do 98 into 99, uh, so uh, 49... Uh, will be for, uh, this is 4900 minus 49 is 494851 minus 1 4850 will be the answer okay so that is how we identify the pattern so there will be a question for sure in the examination which in which we are given a long pattern and we need to identify the pattern and answer the question next question a tea shop offers tea in cups of three different sizes the product of prices of three different sizes is equal to 800. Uh, the prices of the smallest size and the medium size are in the ratio 2 ratio 5. If the shop owner decides to increase the prices of the smallest and the medium ones by rupees 6, keeping the price of the largest size unchanged, the product changes to 3200, right? And we have to find the sum of original prices of three different sizes. All right, so let us do this question. So let us say the prices are 2x, 5x and y respectively, okay. So when we multiply this, this total is 800, okay. Now it is, it is increasing the price of smallest and medium ones by 6 rupees. So this will be 2x plus 6, this will be 5x plus 6 and this remains as y only, okay. So this is 3200. So if we divide this, this is 4 times of this, okay. So can we say that uh, 4 times of 2x into 5x is equal to 2x plus 6 into 5x plus 6 because this pr price is being multiplied 4 times, okay. This is constant. So if we multiply this by 4 times, we get this. So we, this will be 40x square. Uh, that will be equal to this is 10x square plus 30x this is 30x plus 42x plus 36 okay so we'll get an equation it will be uh, 30x square minus 42x minus 36 equal to 0 6 common 5x square minus 7x minus 6 is equal to 0 so if we see this minus 30 and this is minus 7, minus 10 and so we can say that x minus 2, 5x plus 3 equal to 0, isn't it? So so how to find this, uh, how to find this root is like either you use the discriminant method or you can just split into two parts. So I can see that 5 into 6 is minus 30, okay, and we need to think of like minus 10 and 3 okay so i took 5x minus 10 so uh, x x is equal to 2 so solving this we get x is equal to 2 so this means this is 4 and this is 10 and uh, this should be 40 into 20 so let's just verify like 4 into 10 into 20 800 correct 
and if we put this increase by 6 it will be 10 it will be 16 so 4 times and into 20 is 3200 so that is also correct so we need to find the sum of original prices 4 plus 10 plus 20 that is 34 rupees that is the answer to this question next question if n is a positive integer such that this series is greater than product of this series is greater than 999 okay all right so this series is basically 10 raised to the power 1 by 7 into 10 raised to the power 2 by 7 into 10 raised to the power 3 by 7 and so on okay so it should be greater than 999 so we know that 10 raised to the power 3 is equal to 1000 so we need to see at what value of n does it reach 3 okay so uh, we need to find the sum of first n natural numbers so sum of first n natural numbers we know that uh, see if we add 1 2 3 4 we get 10 okay if we add 5 we get 15 if we add 6 we get 21 so if we add 1 2 3 4 5 6 we get 21 so if we have till 6 10 raised to the power 6 by 7 we would get a total of 10 raised to the power 3 because 20 if we will add these powers right we will add 1 by 7 plus 2 by 7 so we'll get 10 by 3 is greater than this so that satisfies the condition so the smallest value of n will be 6 after that anyway it will be greater than this one so till 5 it will be less and at 6 it becomes greater next question bank a offers 6 percent interest per annum compounded half yearly bank b and bank c offer simple interest but the annual interest rate offered by bank c is twice that of bank b raju invest a certain amount in bank b for a certain period and rupa invest 10,000 in bank C for twice that period. The interest that would accrue to Raju during that period is equal to the interest that would have accrued had he invested the same amount in bank A for one year. The interest accrued in INR to Rupa is. Okay. So we have three banks A, B and C. Okay. So both of them are offering simple interest and A is offering compound interest. Now Raju invests some money in this in bank B. Okay. And the interest that he is getting is the same he will get in bank A. Bank A is offering 6% per annum compounded half yearly. So basically if it is compounded half yearly, the effective rate for, uh, so it is uh, saying that uh, he invests for, uh, in bank A for one year. In bank A for one year, it will be basically uh, we know that it is if it is compounded half yearly the rate is r effective is 3 and time effective is 2 okay so uh, like if we see 1.03 ka whole square it is 1.69 1.0609 so the effective rate rate will be 6.09 percent r will be 6.09 percent uh, this will be the amount okay the factor for amount so if we subtract one, we get R is equal to 6.09%. So in this case, the rate of interest is 6.09%. And it is given that uh, rate offered by bank C is twice of that. So uh, if the rate is 6.09%, here the rate is 12.18%. Okay. All right. Now it is saying that Rupa invest 10,000 in bank C for twice that period. Okay, so she invests 10,000 for twice that period. So basically, her uh, simple interest will be P R is 12.18 by 100 and T is 2 years. Okay, so twice that period. So this will give us 1218 into 2, 2400. 36 that will be the answer to this question so a difficult question on uh, simple and compound interest uh, it required a lot of time to read and understand and then answer it in the appropriate way next question the cost of fencing a rectangular plot is 200 per feet along one side and 100 per feet along the three other sides 
If the area of the rectangular plot is 60,000 square feet, then the lowest possible cost of fencing all four sides in rupees is. Okay. So let us say that this is the rectangular field. Okay. And what we need to do is we have a plot that is 200 uh, on one side. So let us say that this length is x and this is y. Okay, so uh, 200 per feet along one side. So let us say on this side it is 200. Right? So let's not worry about which is the smaller, larger one. Just taking an example. So this is 200 on this side, 100 on the other three sides. So here the cost is 100, 100 and 100. Okay, now it says that the total cost is we have to uh, lowest possible cost. Okay, so what, what is what we need to do here is what is the cost of this? So if we see this, the cost is 100x plus 200x, 300x plus, and this is 100y plus 100y, 200y. Okay, so we need to minimize this cost. So basically, we need to find the minimum value of 3x plus 2y. Okay, now one thing is this, and another thing that we are given is that area is 60,000. So we are also given that x, y is equal to this. Okay. Now we know that if we are given a product, if we know a product and we are given a sum and we need to minimize a sum, right? So there is a question from a maxima and minima. So if we are given a product and we need to minimize a sum, so these values should be equal. So 3x when 3x is equal to 2y, we will get the minimum sum. This will be minimum when 3x is equal to 2y. Now, what, is, what we should do is, see, the product of what we will, let's do this thing is, xy is equal to 60,000. So, 3x into 2y is equal to 6 times, that is 36, followed by 4 zeros. Okay. So, uh, as I said that whenever, like that is the AMGM inequality, right? So the inequality holds when the, the values are equal, right? So AM is equal to GM. So product of two numbers is given and we need to find the minimum sum. So that means they should be equal. So 3x into 2y is this. So 3x is equal to 2y. Since this is a square number, 36, 0, 0 and 0, 0. So we can see that 3x is equal to 2y is equal to 600, right, 600, uh, so this is 10, this is 10, 600 per square. So 3x will be is equal to 2y is equal to 600, okay. Now we need to find the lowest possible cost, right. So this is uh, 3x plus 2y will be 1200, 3x plus 2y will be 1200 because both of them have to be equal and since it is uh, we are, the cost is 300x plus 200y. So just add two zeros here. So the answer will be 1,20,000. So it was based on AMGM inequality. That was the concept used here. So whenever you have to, we are given a product. So the minimum value is of the sum is when both these values are equal. So we equated them to this. All right, so let's see the next question. Uh, this is an easy one. It says that fx is given to us and gx is given to us. We have to find the minimum value of fgx minus 3x. Okay, fx is given as gx is given as f of gx minus 3x is equal to instead of uh, x square, we will put gx. gx is uh, x plus 3. So x plus 3 ka whole square minus 7 times of x plus 3 minus 3x. We need to find its minimum value. So it comes as x square plus 6x plus 9 minus 7x minus 21 minus 3x. So it is equal to x square. This is minus 10 minus 4x and this minus 12. So we need to find the minimum value. So minimum exists as minus b upon 2a. So minimum will exist at 2. So remember that minimum exists at minimum at x equal to minus b upon 2a. 
Okay, so remember this thing. Or you can use differentiation also. You can say that 2x minus 4 is equal to 0. Right, so that means x is equal to 2. So same thing. So minimum at x is equal to 2. So that means 4 minus uh, this is uh, 8 minus 12. So that is minus 16. That is the answer to this question. It was a simple one. Okay, so that was the solution to the questions that were asked in the third slot. Some of them were quite challenging, but I hope uh, by watching this video, you must have got the optimum way to approach these questions. And if you enjoyed uh, the solutions, don't forget to like this video.